Hello, my name is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the paired t-test. This is a pretty lengthy introduction and you can pause and read it if you want, but the idea here is that we measure the number of rusty leaves on a set of apple trees in one year, we do a treatment, we measure, we count the number of rusty leaves on those same apple trees in the following year. And our belief here is that the treatment that we have will reduce the number of rusty leaves. So that is going to be our, our alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis then is the opposite of that. Alternatively, we can state this as an estimation question and say what is the reduction of rusty leaves in our sample between the two years. All right, so here's the data. We have eight trees. We have a number of rusty leaves for each of those trees for each of two different years. So the data here are clearly paired because we have two measurements on each tree. And it turns out that in the uh, test that we're going to be doing, that the only relevant quantity is actually the difference within tree difference from year one to year two. So we've pre-calculated that here in the diff column. That's just the year one column minus the year two column. In using the paired t-test, we're going to be making some assumptions. And before we get to that, we want to introduce the notation. So here, y1j is the number of rusty leaves on tree j in year one, and y2j is the associated quantity, but in year two. The assumption then is that this difference within a tree, y1j minus y2j, which we're going to now refer to as dj, has an independent and identically distributed uh, distribution from a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma squared. We can rewrite the hypotheses that we have. The alternative here is that mu is greater than zero. That is, we expect more rusty leaves in year one than we do in year two. And the alternative is the opposite of that which we can write either as mu less than or equal to zero or as mu equal to zero. It turns out that mathematically this will be equivalent. All right, in order to create a, calculate a p-value to test these hypotheses, we need a test statistic. In this case, the test statistic is going to be the average difference minus the expected average difference, that's mu, divided by the standard error of the average difference. The standard error of the average difference is just s divided by the square root of n, where s is the sample standard deviation and n is the number of observations. If the null hypothesis is true, then mu is in fact zero, and this quantity has a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. In order to calculate the p-value for this one-sided test, we simply need the probability that, t, that a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom is greater than our test statistic quantity. All right, and so we can quickly do that for these data and find that the p-value is 0.02. Uh, and if we're using a standard cutoff of 0.05, we would say that we reject the null hypothesis. All right, we can also construct a confidence interval. In this case, we're going to construct a one-sided confidence interval uh, associated with our one-sided hypothesis. So that is going to have an upper endpoint at infinity, but the more important side is the lower endpoint. This looks very similar to the confidence interval that we used for the two-sample t-test when we are using a two-sided hypothesis. Uh, but now, instead of having a plus-minus symbol here, we only have a minus. And instead of having alpha over 2, we just have the alpha, 1 minus alpha cutoff. So again, we'd go and look at this cutoff. And we would construct our confidence interval. And the lower endpoint would be 2.33. So that means we can say we are 95% confident that the true difference in the number of rusty leaves is greater than 2.33. Again, just like before, we will typically not calculate these quantities by hand, but instead we will let uh, a computer statistical package do it for us. Again, here we're using SAS. In this case, the first part just reads in the data, and the second part uses the PROC t-test with the paired statement. That tells it that we're doing a paired t-test. And here, the sides equal up u is for upper, meaning that we want the upper uh, hypothesis test, the alternative being the upper-sided hypothesis. All right, so the output from SAS is much smaller than it was for the two-sample t-test. The relevant quantities that we're interested in here is the p-value, down here, 0.02, and the confidence interval right here, 2.33 to infinity. So if we're going to write this as a statistical conclusion, we can say the removal of red cedar trees within 100 yards is associated with a significant reduction in rusty apple leaves with, by a paired t-test with p-value 0.02.
and the mean reduction in rust color leaves an estimate is 10.5 with a 95% one-sided confidence interval of 2.33 to infinity. Thank you.